I recently decided to try a new supplier of comic bags and boards, and today we're gonna take a closer look. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. I will tell you up front that I think more about bags and boards, comic supplies, how to store my books, than I really even want to admit to you, but it's an ongoing tension of wanting to get the best uh, protected material for my comic books and maintaining some reasonable form of budget as I do so. And today's video is really just the next attempt uh, in trying to find that perfect balance between protection and budget. I am going to be showing you today some bags and boards that I got from a new company that I've never used before. They are called Comic Pro Line. I am not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just a first time customer. I got an ad on social media over the holidays that said they were having a big sale and really the prices were too good to pass up. I did a little bit of research online before placing an order just to see what people's opinions were about these supplies. I didn't want to just buy them blind, but saw enough positive things that it made me say, all right, I'll give it a go and I'll place an order. We're not going to make this an exhaustive conversation about supplies. I did put up a video a while back talking much more generally about bags and boards, supplies and things like that. I'll put a link up above and down below to that video in case you want to check that out later. Today we're going to focus primarily on kind of doing an overview of this product. I'll give you some thoughts and, and observations as I've had a chance to use these a little bit. We'll do a little bit of comparison to some other uh, types of bags and boards that I use and have used historically just to give you a better idea of where this fits and hopefully this will be informative to you if you're trying to find what's that balance between providing the right level of protection for my comic books and some form of budget. The first thing I'll say about this company is that when I went to their website to consider placing an order it was really their mylar bags that I was looking at first and foremost. I have purchased some Mylar bags in the past directly from manufacturer E. Gerber, probably the most well-known manufacturer of Mylar comic book bags. And they're great, but there are some limitations. The primary one being that you need to place a minimum order of $100. And so I've kind of always been on the lookout casually for other ways to get Mylar supplies. Not many stores in my area carry them. You can get them on Amazon, but the price is just ridiculous. So eager is really the most cost effective way to get those Mylar supplies. But again, you need to be able to hit that $100 minimum before you can even place an order with them. So when I saw that Comic Pro line had Mylar bags, I thought, well, that probably will be where I start. But as I got into it a little bit more, what I found is that their main line of bags are these here that they call two mil crystal clear OPP. OPP, from what I understand, stands for oriented polypropylene. So on some level, this is a polypropylene bag, but the way they advertise these are that it's like Mylar, but at a fraction of the cost. And I'll admit that the price for a, a pack of 100 bags is significantly less, even without the sale price, than Mylar on E. Gerber, and you don't have the $100 minimum. So it's got that going for it. These are two mil thickness, which is the same as basically most of your polypropylene bags that you get from places like BCW or Ultra Pro. That's the brand that's typically carried in a lot of my local stores in my area. Also the same thickness as the MyLite 2s from E. Gerber. And that I think is their most popular size. The other thing I can tell you is that uh, just kind of from a a first observation perspective when you take these out of the bag and you you look at them and compare them to other product it's a similar comparison to if you look at a polypropylene bag and a polyethylene bag next to each other polypropylene it's a little crinklier than polyethylene polyethylene of all the bag types is the softest type of plastic 
that gets used. That's also the type of plastic, if you've seen uh, books that have been in boxes for years and they've been pressed together, when you go to separate them, you get that plastic peel sound because they stick together a little bit. That's a polyethylene. Uh, polypropylene, again, a little crinklier, it's clearer, uh, a little crispier feeling. When you hold the Comic Pro line bag in your hand and hold it next to a traditional polypropylene bag, that comparison is similar. So the, the Comic Pro line bag is kind of crinkly. This is one here. It's kind of a, I don't know if you can hear it. It's crinklier than polypropylene, but it's still a little softer than Mylar. When you put your book in it, where do I, I have two here. I have several samples here to be able to show you for some comparison. Let's move this out of the way. So I'm gonna put two books up here, same book actually, so it makes it a little bit more of a fair comparison. Oops, I don't know if you can see these at all. One of these is in a Mylar bag and one of these is in the Comic Pro Line Crystal Clear OPP bag. Can you tell which is which? And I'll kind of move them around here, get some good reflection on both. Let's, let's trade spots here so you can see as well. Because this one in my right hand is kind of catching the reflection of my computer and the lights and things in here, uh, more so than this one on uh, in my left hand here. But side by side, I don't know if you can tell much of a difference, but even in person, these look very similar. There is a very slight difference if you kind of hit the angle in the light just right. I'll put them up here again. But of these two bags, this one here is Mylar. This one here is the Comic Pro Line Crystal Clear OPP. There's a, a, a couple um, ways that I can tell the difference. One, again, is that moving it in the light and catching it the right way, you can see the texture. The other thing, or another thing, the Comic Pro Line bags have a, oops, yeah, a two inch fold over flap. That's this one here. Whereas the Mylar, I think that's just an inch and a half. But th this type of a fold over flap is more traditional this two inch fold over flap is the largest that I've seen from any of the different uh, manufacturers that I've used over the years. But from a general appearance, it really presents well, uh, makes your book present well. It's very clear, very nice to look at. One of the advantages I've heard of this OPP over this right here, for example, this is a traditional polypropylene bag, side by side. Both are crystal clear. Um, if you look at this polypropylene bag, you might be able to see, yeah, the light catches it a little bit there. This is not an old bag. This is a new bag that I pulled out just for the purpose of this video and this comparison. It has a little bit more of a waviness already to it. You can see the way my overhead light is reflecting in there. This has a little bit more waviness to it than the OPP. And if you've used polypropylene bags for any length of time, you've probably seen that effect where over time, the polypropylene gets kind of this ripple effect in it. From what I've read and what I've seen online, that does not affect the protective properties of the polypropylene bag, but from a visual aesthetic standpoint, might be less desirable than something that will not uh, wrinkle over time. Now, I will say Comic Pro Line doesn't specifically say it won't wrinkle, but it does say that it won't have some of those aging effects that a traditional plastic or poly bag would have. One of the things it calls out is the yellowing. And if you've ever used polyethylene bags, those are the ones that typically have a yellowing effect. I've got, actually got some over here I can show you. These are some bags that I recently replaced on some books. Here's one here. You can't really tell the yellowing effect on this, but you can tell it's polyethylene because it's a little bit foggier than a polypropylene bag. It is softer and less prone to tearing, which happens a lot of times with the polypropylene bags and even the Mylar bags at times. If the seam isn't quite right, it can split. Um, so this won't tear as easily, but it's a little more translucent rather than transparent. And the yellowing you can really see 
when you stack up several bags together. So there you go. Ooh, just kind of looks, just looks yucky. Again, from some of the things I've read, that yellowing isn't necessarily damaging your books, but even if it's not damaging your books, it doesn't look so great. So be nice if there was an alternative that avoided that type of effect in the long term. Yeah, this, this OPP, we'll see. I, I can't speak to long term yet, whether or not it will ripple or do any other kind of, or have any other kind of a, a effect where it deteriorates or you know looks less appealing over time, but it looks real nice. It looks very much like the Mylar, and it was significantly less than Mylar. Uh, let's talk a little bit about price for a second here. The normal price is from Comic Pro Line, and I'll put a link to their website below so you can go on and check those out for yourself. Their normal prices for the uh, OPP type bags are pretty comparable to a polypropylene price. So it's much more on par with the polypropylene stuff, like from BCW, Ultra Pro, things like that. Whereas Mylar on E. Gerber is significantly more expensive. When you look at Comic Pro Line's Mylar bags, those are, I think I jotted it down here, their Mylars on Comic Pro Line, they're in 100 packs as opposed to E. Gerber, which sells them in uh, 50 bags per pack. But you can get 100 Mylars right now on Comic Pro Line for $22 and change. To get 50 from E. Gerber, it's $13 and change. So you gotta double that to get the real comparable price. Like $26 for Mylar from E. Gerber, $22 to $23 for Mylar from Comic Pro Line. So just as a simple price comparison, that's more affordable. And again, you don't need to place the $100 minimum on Comic Pro Line in order to get an order from them to begin with. The one thing I will say uh, to keep in mind when it comes to placing an order with Comic Pro Line is the shipping. These are, uh, they're based in Canada, so everything's manufactured in Canada. I'm in the US here in Minnesota. And when it comes to shipping options, there was only one option for US shipping. It was just a flat rate that went by weight. And I think the, the least expensive one is like $22, which is pretty high from a shipping perspective when we're very accustomed to like Amazon and free shipping and things like that. So I would definitely recommend if you were gonna order from them in order to really dilute that, uh, the effect of that shipping cost, better to order a little bit, you know, as much as you can. So that way it spreads that shipping cost out because you could add multiple packs of bags and boards and still maintain that shipping. Once it goes over a certain weight, it jumped up to like $26. So you got to kind of play with that a little bit to, again, find that right sweet spot for shipping. If it weren't for the shipping, it would just be, you know, a no brainer just to order these. Uh, what I probably will do is I got about 500 bags and boards for now, and I probably won't order another set until they have another big sale because that really knocked the price down. And I think it was something like a pack of 100 bags was normally $7 and change, and I got each pack of bags for like $4 and change. And I think the boards, their normal price for 100 boards is like 11 and change, and I got them for like $7 and change. So it was significant savings there, and I probably saved about 30% overall, uh, even once you add the shipping in and things like that. So that was a great deal. It was definitely a good time to buy. So go to their website, check them out, do your research um, and make the decision for yourself. Another thing I'll point out is when it comes to the size of their bags, I talk about in that first video I did on supplies that when it comes to polypropylene, historically, I like the BCW because they offer a size that's called regular slash silver. And that bag is seven and an eighth inches wide. Whereas your traditional silver, uh, silver age bag, or even the standard bag from E Gerber is seven and a quarter inches. And where that becomes significant is when you put a backer board in there, pretty much every manufacturer I've come across that has a silver age backing board, they're seven inches wide. And the difference there is that with E Gerber even, you're talking, once you put the backer board in the bag, you've got a quarter inch gap between 
your board and then just blank bag space. But with the Comic Pro line and the BCW as well, their bags are seven and an eighth inch for this kind of regular slash silver size. And then the backer boards are seven inches. So you only have an eighth inch gap, which just, it fills the bag a little bit better. And then, you know, when you look at your comic in the bag and board, it just looks a little nicer. So here again is that, here's that Mylar. Sorry, now we got glare to deal with as well. And you can see all this, this gap on this side and there's gap on that side. And then here is the same book in the Comic Pro line. And there's just, it's a, an eighth of an inch difference in terms of how much gap you have on either edge. You know, that's, that's a minute detail, right? Not everybody cares about it, but typically comic collectors are pretty detail oriented when it comes to all of the little nuances of their collection. So I figure worth pointing that out that there is that slight size difference, I think in a positive way, uh, going for comic pro line. The other thing I'll tell you that's pretty cool is that they've got a good number of options when it comes to backing boards. The typical backing board from like a BCW Ultra Pro, one of those kind of things, is a 24 point backing board. And that's the equivalent of your halfback from eGerber as well. These guys, Comic Pro Line, do have a 24 point backing board, but the branding, the package is completely different. I almost wonder if they outsource that and get that from a different company and just make that available. But the next one up is this one here, you can see it's opened already. I've been using this one. This is a 28 point backing board and it is noticeably thicker and more rigid than your traditional 24 point backer. It's a little bit thinner than a half back. I think, I mean, I'm sorry, a full back, a full back from E Gerber, I think is like 35 points of thickness. So it's kind of in between that half back and that full back thickness. But the price difference between the 24 and the 28 on the Comic Pro line site was less than a dollar. So that was an easy decision. I definitely wanted to go with a little bit thicker board because it just gives a, a little bit more support. And even when you're, you know, that you hold the comic in your hand, it's just got, it just feels more substantial with that little bit thicker backing board. But again, if all things were equal, I would love full backs and my light twos all the time, but money is a factor. So try to do the best I can while not breaking the bank at the same time. Another product they have that I did not get, but probably the first product that I ever saw from Comic Pro Line, that is their crystal clear backer board. And they have those in a number of thickness, uh, thicknesses as well. I've seen collectors use those. If you don't want to slab it, you still want to be able to take your book out, but you want to be able to see both the front and the back of the book. Those clear backer boards are really nice because then you don't have, you know, the art on the back isn't hidden by a traditionally white backing board. So that's another product that they offer. But check out their website, see the different supplies they have, full range of sizes for bags, the different sizes for the boards. They've got boxes, they've got Mylar, they've got resealable bags, they've got a bunch of things. I just went with the, um, the size of bag and board that I will use most broadly in my collection. And um, I still have Mylar. I've been working with Mylar to rebag and board my comics from the oldest books forward. And I think basically I've got it now where every comic I have up to a publication date of 1988 or so is now in Mylar. And then everything you know after that is still a mix of a variety of things. It's either in the bag and board it was in when I bought it, or I've used polypropylene or some polyethylene, which though it gets that fogginess to it and it is soft, it is not prone to tear. And it's still, I really like the polyethylene. I like the feel of the polyethylene for, you know, kind of your, your everyday books, but I don't know. I, I think I just like bags and boards overall. So I'll, I'll continue to think about these things. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, plan to do Mylar all the way through to my newest books. Again, largely driven by budget constraints, but this Comic Pro line product does seem to be a really nice balance of price 
and protection with the added bonus of a really nice aesthetic for how your book looks when it's in the bag and board. The only limitation I'll throw in here at the end is when it comes to the backing boards where eGerber still has the edge, and this is only gonna be an edge for people who, who do what I'm about to say. Uh, for most people, it's, it's not really even a, um, an advantage, but the eGerber backer board is acid free through and through. So it doesn't matter which side of the backing board you put your comic on. For me, where that becomes significant is uh, when I put my bags, particularly when I put my runs in Mylar, I will put two comic books in a bag and board, one on each side of that eGerber halfback or fullback. And I've got, here's, here's Sektar from the 80s, another nice uh, 80s nostalgia book to show you. There's issue five on the front. Let me flip it around the back and there's issue six. I know not everybody's gonna do that, but there's a number of reasons why I do it this way. I talk about those things in that other video. So if you wanna hear about those, you can go check that out. But that being said, the Comic Pro line uh, backer board does not give you that option. This is coated on one side. So it has a shiny side and then the matte flat uh, opposite side. And even though it doesn't call it out on the pack of um, backer boards, I'm assuming it's like all other manufacturers I've used where you put the book on the shiny side, not ever on the matte back side of that board. So you can't take advantage of this uh, combo here and you know put two books in there, which really effectively cuts your price in half. But that's a, a minor limitation because again, all other things being equal, I would love to have one book in a bag and board and have you know each of my individual issues for individual presentation. So I just wanted wanted to be kind of thorough there with that uh, review of the the different aspects and how I how I look at these things. Uh, I might as well go ahead and show you. I chose Visionaries as the series to display these books in just because I'm an 80s, 90s kid and I love the Visionaries when I was a kid. Didn't remember this, but Mark Bagley does the pencils on this series and he does all of the covers apparently, except for issue number one. So issue number one is a, the Budiansky does the cover here and Joe Sinnott does the inks. And Bob Budiansky, he is most renowned for creating much of what we know and love to be the Transformers. And he was the at the helm of things back when Marvel started doing these comic books for uh, Transformers back in the 80s. But he did this cover on issue number one of Visionaries. Mark Bagley does the interiors. And it, he didn't sign any of these, but I read online that Mark Bagley did the covers for issues two through six. It was a short run series, but I'd love to look at these covers. I could just look at them over and over again. Here's issue two from that series. This is in a traditional polypropylene bag. This is one of the BCW bags and their standard uh, backing board there. And then issue three, for one more comparison, this is in a polyethylene bag. So the softest of the three, but a little less clear than the polypropylene. I think you can see that a little bit there as it comes through. And then issues four, five, and six. These, I didn't even, let's move this. Let's get this out of the way here. I didn't even change the bag and board on these. These are the same bag and board that I've had these in since the late 80s, early 90s. This series came out in 1987, 1988. These are the bags and boards I bought when I first started buying them. I'm guessing sometime in the early 90s. I don't even remember. You can see back then, it was, you, you wanna talk about gaps in the bag and the board? Look at this, that's like, that's significant there. But these are still in the same bag and board. I, I am guessing these are polypropylene, but for about, about 30 years now, they're in the same bag and board. And so because of that, you can, uh, you can gather or guess that I'm not part of that camp that says that polypropylene is horrible for your comic books. <laughs> I, I've had polypropylene like this 
for decades and there's no ink transfer on these backing boards. The, the books are no worse for wear. And so they, they continue to be safe and well protected. I will say that I think that the environment that you store your books in is equally as important as the materials that you use to bag and board your comics. If you've got your books stored in a space that is either hot or cold and has, is exposed to levels of humidity or temperature swings, that will contribute to the deterioration of your prized collectibles. So be mindful of that. Whatever materials you use for bags and boards, that's gonna be just as important. That's gonna do it for this review of the Comic Pro line bags and boards. I do hope you found some of this helpful. Have you used these before? Uh, if so, let us know your thoughts and comments down below because again, I'm not affiliated with them. Just wanna give you an honest uh, observations and thoughts about these as I start to use these bags and boards and hopefully you find that helpful and we will find your comments helpful as well. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.